Hello, and welcome to Junkbotics. My name is Andrew. In this video, I want to show you how you can interface with the TX2 RX2 chipset found on the control board of your RC vehicle. I want to show you how you can inject a signal directly into a pin on the chip in order to control its functions, as well as how to bypass the chip in order to control the steering actuator and rear drive motor H bridges. So let's get started. All right, so there's two methods that I want to introduce uh, here in interfacing to the control board that's going to be on your RC vehicle. I want to introduce uh, both direct signal injection into the TX2 RX2 chipset, as well as uh, bypassing that chipset and interfacing directly to the H bridges that are on the uh, controller board. Um, but before we can get to that, well, um, I was investigating my machine or my vehicle yesterday and uh, well, I ran into a little bit of an issue, and I kind of want to uh, go over that. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, do that uh, first. So for my vehicle here, I wanted to do the direct signal injection uh, um, process in first on it because basically it would do you do the least amount of I don't know modifications that are needed to the control board in order to uh, do it. And in order to do that, um, you, you basically inject the signal into one particular pin on the, uh, basically the RX2 portion of the uh, TX2 RX2 chipset. Um, that particular pin is pin number three. Now, if you look at the, um, if you look at the uh, reference uh, diagrams or the reference schematics for implementing, uh, you know, that are in the data sheet for the TX2 RX2 chipset, and uh, you know, I have I have here the uh, and you know these are these are on the GitHub. I have here the uh, reference uh, well a couple of the data sheets from the uh, from the TX2 RX2 chipset that is in my vehicle specifically. Um, but I will put up uh, several other uh, data sheets for other versions of the chipset. But they all basically are the same. Um, they virtually all they uh, come from a um, they come from a particular uh, a particular uh, implementation of the chipset most of them are clones um, but they all include a schematic diagram for implementing a uh, you know basically a reference diagram for imp for how to implement and use the chipset to control a an RC vehicle um, in this particular case, and for this particular uh, this particular TX2 RX2 chipset, which is um, um, which is the one I have here, um, basically you have to inject into pin number three, um, which is called the SI pin, and the data sheet reads the input pin of the encoding signal. Now I'll have all kinds of information on the GitHub again on how to do this and such, but in order, in order to do it, as I said, I needed to, I want, what I wanted to do is I wanted to eliminate some parts of the, of the board that I didn't need, that I didn't want to power or anything like that. And the main parts that I wanted to do, the, do, to that, do for that were essentially I wanted to isolate, I wanted to isolate the power that goes to the chip itself. So I wanted to keep the power going to the chip for obvious reasons. You have to have it powered. Um, but I also wanted to eliminate the power and the input coming from the RF side of things because I don't have a I don't have a controller here, and um, so I number one I didn't need the RF side of anything, and number two I didn't want any interference coming from any external RF because these are just standard uh, I believe they're AM um, twenty seven or what was the other 49 megahertz um, style receivers and they can get interference so I didn't want any kind of interference I didn't need the receiver portion or the RF section so I just wanted to eliminate that so in order to do that I went through the uh, I went through the schematic for the reference and compared it to what was on the actual board and what I found was is that well, 
what was on the board didn't really match what was on the reference. And so what I ended up having to do was essentially create my own, my own schematic or partial schematic of where and what parts went to what. And from this schematic, and I'll, like I said, I'll have these on the GitHub and everything. They will probably, they'll just give you an idea of what I was doing. Um, I could see where I could get rid of certain parts in order to disable the power going to the RF section, keep the power going to the chipset, and disable the, uh, you know, basically, basically disable the input from the RF section that goes into the chip. And that way, I could have, uh, I could have, um, you know, basically I can eliminate that stuff and, and continue to use the board. But I ran into a couple of issues, and I'm going to fix these and try things again. Um, but basically, in the process of tilting this board around, I had to look. I, I had I had to look on one side and the other. And uh, one of the things that I one of the things that I did in order to do this, and you could do this yourself. Um, and uh, you know, it's like uh, let me let me let me let me uh, let me grab let me grab something here. I would take a flashlight, and this kind of this kind of helps. Take a flashlight, and you might be able to see this. Um, well, maybe, maybe not. I'll, I'll bring I'll bring the camera in closer here. Um, let me bring the camera in. So coming down here, and all right, yeah, okay. So. If we, if we, if I hold this like this, you can see how the light shines through the uh, through the through the board, and allows you to see the traces. You can actually see the traces where they go from the chip to other parts. And this is between that and I also, you know, wore these things. My my magnifying glasses. Um, you know, some of you, uh, if you have younger eyes, you can see things better. But uh, these allowed me to see what the parts were. Um, how traces went. Um, some of these traces are kind of close together. Um, but in the process of flipping this board back and forth, well, I ran into an issue. Number one, this this wire here basically became disconnected. This is the power wire. It became disconnected. Now, fortunately, I know it goes right there. Um, the other wire that came off was this wire, the negative wire that goes, or the negative side of the motor wire that goes to the um, to the steering actuator. And uh, here's one thing that um, is going to help me. I can hook these back back up. Now I didn't know where these went. Well, other than the power wire, I didn't know where the other one went. And what I found was is that fortunately I'd taken pictures of this board. You've seen them probably in the other videos, and they're on the GitHub and elsewhere. Um, so I could see where the wires actually went on the board, and this is something you probably want to do before you start messing around with your with your own board. Is take some pictures of both sides if you can. Ideally, take at least a picture of where the wires are going in, what wires, what their colors, and everything. Um, get as many detailed shots as you can, uh, close up and clear. Uh, that way, if anything like this happens to you then you can easily fix fix it back if you you know if you go there um if you you know if you need to um what i found that was is i needed to find out i wanted to find out what the power was that went into the chip now the power that goes into the tx2 rx2 chipset goes into pin number 13 that's uh, the positive power supply and if you look on the reference uh, schematics and whatnot in the various data sheets you'll see that there's a um there's essentially kind of like a Zener diode voltage regulator uh, system that's going on in there. Um, they reference, uh, they, they, they uh, use that kind of a thing. They're, they also sometimes use just a, uh, oh, what I want to call it, just a uh, uh, voltage, uh, voltage divider type uh, situation. And you can see that on the, on the thing here, they specify for different uh, voltages, um, what the resistor of this resistor here is supposed to be, um, in order to, in order for the supply voltage to supply the proper uh, current and voltage to the uh, to the uh, RX2 chip. Um, so I decided I wanted to find out what that voltage was because in the process of trying to diagram all this, 
I honestly, this thing was getting really complex and I couldn't really see how or what the voltage was that they were feeding the actual chip or what the values were or anything because, well, and this is something you're going to find out. This, this reference diagram doesn't necessarily, will necessarily match what they actually implemented on the board. And in my case, it didn't. Um, but, uh, you know, what I, what I ended up doing is I ended up saying, okay, well, you know, let's just try plugging in a battery. So I took a battery that I had, um, a 9.6 uh, NICAD battery here, and I plugged it in. And fortunately, this is only a 700 milliamp hour, so it doesn't give a lot of power. But whenever I plugged it in, I turned it on. I didn't have any problems. I was probing around, and over time, I started to smell something that smelled, well, like burning. <laughs> and, I'm, you know, I used my handy-dandy uh, temperature probe, my finger, and started probing around on these parts. Where, which, which one was hot? You know, because I couldn't see any smoke or anything. And what I found was this particular, this particular resistor here, was what was hot, very hot. It didn't burn me, but uh, had I let it run more, it probably could have. And I honestly don't know if it, it you know, it's from what I could see, based on what I could see, uh, looking at things, looking at the board, looking at where it's at. Um, and what it's doing, it seems to be feeding into the H-bridge for the steering actuator. I don't know if it was getting hot because the positive or the negative wire from the steering actuator um, came loose before or if it became loose after or what. Um, but basically, um, basically something's going on there. So what I want to do is I want to put those wires back in place, solder them back in place. Try plugging this battery back in and seeing if uh, you know, seeing if that if that particular part heats up again. Okay, so uh, here I am in my uh, magnifying glasses. Uh, basically, after consulting my pictures, um, the uh, basically where this uh, where this negative wire here, uh, this one right here, as you can see, it's kind of loose. Where this goes is actually right over if I can get these not very easily it goes right right here on this pad right there and uh, on this pad I just have to solder that back in place as you can see this one right here um, this 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 positive wire it's not really well attached um, I'm going you know I, I honestly don't know if it's actually attached or not so I'm going to uh, I'm going to clip it and resolder it back to this pad, which is where it goes, and uh, you know then you know just go we'll just uh, go from there. So uh, let me get on to that. Okay, uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, positive. This red wire also appears to be kind of loose. Huh. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. What can we do here? All right. We'll uh, start. Start by uh, just uh, desoldering this, which is already kind of pretty much broken. All right. You see there's like some kind of weird glue on this thing. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, we're just going to remove it. And uh, we're going to... Kind of also, uh, kind of also remove it from uh, from this pad. Just to kind of scrape it off. We can just do it with our fingernails because it's so soft. All right, that gives a that gives a pretty good uh, that gives a pretty good uh, spot there. faster a lot better okay so we'll uh, first uh, first uh, strip this uh, wire and uh, just use my handy stripper here and uh, oh. thank you
we go. That's much better. And that we're dealing with this. That we're dealing with this uh, most likely lead-free solder. The solder I'm adding is leaded. May or may not be the best, but uh, you know, it works a lot better, and I just like it better. So uh, there's that. We're going to have to. We're going to have to likely fix this fix this uh, this particular red wire that's coming off the uh, actuator motor as well because it looks oh well, it actually is see how this just breaks off these things just break off and uh, yeah. this is something you might uh, you might encounter yourself you know so be prepared for it is all I can say um, I'm going to yeah, there we go. Well, there's a pad we need to go to. And, uh, yeah. We're going to have to uh, carefully... Oh, carefully uh, trim this. Unfortunately, those uh, wire uh, strippers I have won't... There we go. Won't work with this really tiny wire. I don't know what this is, 20 gauge, 22 gauge. Um, they can probably be dialed down, but I've never been successful with it. Um, so uh, we'll uh, just uh, tin this one again. All right. Ow! <laughs> yeah, okay. You can see we're really soldering here because I just burned myself. <laughs> uh, you know, just uh, keep that in mind. It can happen to you. It happens to me. It can happen to you. And uh, just enjoy the pain, I guess. So, uh, we'll. Uh, oh, and the other thing don't ever try to catch a falling soldering iron. You'll only do that once. That's a good connection there. Okay, so final one is uh, final one is that uh, black black wire. We'll find it here. Up oh, there it is. We just basically got to do the exact same thing. Um, and attach it to that pad right there. Um, so uh, first off, I'm going to. I'm going to clean up that pad and try not to add a little bit of solder to it. Okay, you can see that whenever that, whenever that solder, uh, whenever that solder uh, cools off, it freezes up in a really weird way. It goes from shiny to non-shiny. I'm pretty sure that means it's uh, lead free. Um, that it's just cooling off extremely rapidly. Um, so, uh, so uh, yeah. Um, let's uh, get this uh, get this uh, final wire hooked back up. Get it uh, trimmed off. Twist it up a little bit. I always twist it up before I tin it because it kind of acts like solder wick at that point when you twist it up. It kind of acts as a sponge in a way. This is where having three hands would be very useful at times. But, uh, you know, I don't. So uh, I'll just have to deal. See if we can get this bent around in some manner. Yeah, 
All right, there we go. Now we got it tuned. Maybe not the most fabulous tuning job. Well, that wasn't uh, what I wanted to do. Kind of uh, cut it a little bit short. Oh. All right, that's fine. You know, we're dealing with this is real work here. That uh, you know, this isn't anything fake. This is this is what you can expect yourself. wire back around. I'm going to fish it out so I can manipulate it well enough. Alright, okay, there we go. And uh, get this uh, sorted out. Okay. And we're going to try a little left hand soldering here, which I am not like left handed at all, but you know, it can be done. Feed that in there, let it sit, and there we go. And, that, and that's basically it. So we've got those wires hooked back up. I'll uh, kind of zoom in or move you guys in a little bit. And, uh,. Let's see, yeah, just like that. Get you, yeah, there we go. Um, so, um, so yeah, what we did is uh, we hooked up the uh, hook the black wire, hook the black wire up uh, back up right here. We uh, redid the uh, redid the uh, red wire from the uh, from the mo from the uh, drive from the server. <laughs> <laughs> from the steering actuator drive motor, redid it right there, and uh, then uh, we uh, we hooked up, we uh, rehooked up the um, red wire back up to its uh, positive voltage rail right there for the power. Um, so now all those are all hooked back up, and uh, I'm going to apply power and see what happens. See if that uh, resistor. Uh, see if that resistor gets hot so uh, we'll do that next alright so uh, we're going to try applying power to this thing again and uh, you know see what kind of smoke comes out here if any I'm just gonna move some of my stuff out of the way so alright so uh, just uh, set this right here keep that kind of in place It'll probably fall out anyhow. All right, well, that's okay. And then we'll uh, plug this battery back in. Well, first check off, okay, power switch is off. <laughs> Always good to make sure that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a true thing. Uh, you don't want your power switch to stay on. Um, help we uh, put that connector right. All right, there we go. And uh, then... Uh, then we can flip this whole thing back over. Just let the uh, battery set on the ground there. And uh, I'm going to uh, get my th thermal probe. All right. That's all working. So, um, so yeah, we will turn on the switch and see what happens oh the uh, steering actuator turned on I'm going to see what this does it's climbing in temperature got 86 88 87 okay so it is uh, hitting about 90 now it's a little warm but it's not uh, hot I don't smell anything that smells like burning anymore I'm 
So yeah, I'm going to basically conclude that uh, the reason that uh, this thing got hot initially, yeah, it's not hot at all anymore, is probably because the uh, steering actuator, that one wire, uh, that negative wire came loose, maybe the positive too, and uh, was allowing uh, almost a direct short across uh, this resistor here. I'll show you this resistor. Uh, this, this one right here, this gray one right there. Um, it, uh, yeah, um, so, so yeah, I think, uh, I think we've got this thing kind of sorted now, and, uh, I'll just go ahead and turn this off. All right. Okay, so, as I noted before, uh, the TX2 RX2 chipset, it's a very commonly, uh, uh, a very commonly copied chipset. Um, a lot of clones out there for it. It was originally created by a company called Realtek, and uh, I'll have a data sheet of that uh, particular one on there because it has the information mainly that's needed for uh, doing the uh, direct injection of a signal into it. And I'll also have some um, other links and whatnot um, off of uh, the GitHub uh, to some other resources uh, regarding this, uh, you know, regarding uh, direct signal injection because. There was, a, there was a particular individual who um, actually succeeded in doing this. Uh, before this, uh, what most people did was um, essentially hook directly up to, you know, they would remove the, uh, remove the chip, the chip itself, and directly hook up to the pins uh, for, the, for the H bridges. Now, you know, or for the functions, I should say. Um, now, the problem there was is that uh, in order to do that, uh, you actually use more pins on your uh, microcontroller or whatever embedded uh, system you were using. By doing a direct signal injection, you essentially only need to hook up one pin. Well, that and a ground. Um, and so, you know, that's what, uh, you know, that's what I want to do here. Um, you, still pr you still have to um, eliminate some, some parts, ideally. Um, you can't just... Uh, directly signal inject I mean you could but you don't you don't really want to um, again basically I uh, would need to eliminate the RF section and um, and also its uh, input going into pin number three um, now if you look on the Realtek uh, data sheet uh, you'll see how there are some timing diagrams on what the various uh, signals are that uh, or the various uh, timing diagrams for the signals that you would inject into pin number three and uh, you know on here pin number three is going to be um, I got this uh, kind of uh, kind of reversed here let me look yeah okay pin number three is going to be one two this one right here so we could just solder a wire onto here um, disconnect uh, some other some other parts and uh, that can be our uh, signal injection point right there and of course we'd also need to solder a wire to the uh, ground which is this uh, area right here you know any of this big area is more or less the ground plane um, basically find a pad one here there's numerous ones all around you could just even go directly to the uh, negative that we soldered back on um, and uh, or I should not the negative but the negative we didn't solder back on we soldered positive just you know use that as your ground and uh, then inject those signals with the proper timing and uh, you should be able to get get your functions uh, working uh, just fine doing uh, doing the uh, bypassing of the chip direct interface well basically all you have to do um, in order to do that is uh, essentially well the best way to do it the absolute best way is to remove the RX2 chip remove the re remove this uh, remove this chip from the from the board itself um, it's a it's a 16 pin chip so it's not going to be easy to remove I'll, I'll be honest with you it won't be that easy to remove um, probably the best way to remove it best and fastest way is to essentially take a pair of uh, those uh, you know these uh... <coughs> all right my apologies I uh, had to get a drink I've been talking so much I guess I dried out my throat anyhow <laughs> So, uh, so what I was saying is, the best way is to uh, to remove this uh, to remove this chip off this board. Take a pair of these uh, pair of these uh, side cutter nipper things. They uh, allow you to get really close to uh, really close to the board, 
and essentially just cut away the chip. I'm not going to do it here, but cut the legs off one at a time, pull the chip out, and then, uh, you know, take this board. You might have to desolder the whole thing. Um, I recommend what you do if, you're, if you have to do that, or if you want to go that route. Um, a pair of third hands, uh, something to hold the board. If you can keep from cutting those wires, that's best. Otherwise, cut the wires, but leave some behind or take very good photographs uh, so you know where the wires go back when you need to solder it all back together. And, uh, you know, and then, uh, and then take it, cut those, cut those, cut those leads off, cut that chip out, and then uh, use a pair of pliers and take your soldering iron and uh, heat up each leg or each solder pad of each leg and just pull out one by one and clean up the pads and you know then you're pretty much done now uh, beyond that uh, all you need to do at that point is uh, supply the uh, supply uh, the ground the ground for the for the chip hook the ground up to your uh, to your embedded controller or whatnot that that pin is pin number two uh, which is going to be uh, this pin right here and uh, then uh, essentially hook up each of the individual functions that, uh, that are on your vehicle. Um, so that's going to be uh, pins six and seven, which are for right turning the wheels right and left, and uh, pins 10 and 11, which will make the uh, rear drive motor turn reverse and forward. Um, if, you have a, if you happen to have the turbo function on your vehicle, pin 12, all you have to do is basically apply the voltage that's coming in um, on uh, VDD, which is pin number 13. Apply that voltage to uh, to any of those pins and uh, you know any of those pads, and that'll activate the function. Um, what you can also do is uh, what you can also do is to you know to activate that you know usually. You're looking at you know you you can use uh, you can use generally just uh, TTL voltage levels anywhere between three and five volts high. Um, you can just uh, activate those in that way. Or if you're you know if you're worried about that, you can either use a uh, an opto isolator or a relay to connect the to connect the pin 13 to whichever of those of those pins that you want, and then activate that relay or um, opto isolator using the output from your embedded system. And, uh, you know, in our case, what I'm going to be using uh, is going to be an Arduino. Um, that's just what I'm going to use. It's what I like. Uh, but you can use anything, you know, pick micro, you know, parallax propeller, uh, basic stamp, uh, or even a Raspberry Pi can work. Um, in fact, a Raspberry Pi would be really great. Um, I actually probably will actually add a Raspberry Pi later on to this uh, vehicle um, in the future. So, you know that's basically all you have to do in order to activate those individual functions and again there will be more resources on the github and uh, you know pointing to other resources on the internet uh, where you can find more information about that okay well that wraps up this video if you need more information about this tutorial be sure to check out the junkbotics github at the link down below also be sure to subscribe to junkbotics in order to receive updates about this video series and about other videos in the future I want to thank you for your support, and until next time, remember, keep calm and keep junkin'. Thank you.